We're recording this. <laughs> Toss a coin to your witcher. Oh, the we'll remix. Keep clicking in. <laughs> it's a solid beat, though. Oh, Valley of Plenty. Welcome to Literary Lushes with your host, Samantha. And Megan. And today we are talking about the first book in the Witcher series, if you're going in chronological order of events according to the websites we researched. And that book is The Last Wish by Andre Sapkowski. And if you're not going in order, good luck on following along. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm sorry. And the drink that we are sipping on today is... The White Wolf Witcher Cocktail. Not to be confused with the Wife Wolf Witcher Cocktail. Are you, are you making fun of me again? Nope. Yes, you are. Maybe a little bit. Anyway, it was delicious. It was basically a take on the White Russian. Yeah, it was, and I just switched out the Kahlua with Baileys. Creamy. Which uh, Creamy beige. is great for you non-coffee drinkers, but I enjoyed it. It was pretty good. It's, it's just brilliant. a little on the... Heavier side? It's because there was heavy cream in it. <laughs> was it really called heavy cream? Yes, it was really called heavy <laughs> cream. <laughs> Did not do that on purpose, but that's awesome. Here we go. Um, so yeah, so we're going to be talking about the Witcher book today. Um, and one of the things I liked about this book was one of the things they say in the book is that every fairy tale has a grain of truth. And the book talks about uh, Geralt's random adventures and killing monsters and being the badass, sexy witcher he is. Um, and so I kind of took a note of all of the ref. Well, probably I missed a bunch, but the references I noticed for some of the classic fairy tales. And as you know, fairy tales are my favorite uh, genre, sort of like the twist on the genre, like anyways. like Heartless. Yeah. Like that stuff. Um, so I definitely resonated with the whole Rapunzel thing, the Snow White thing, the Beauty and the Beast. Like there was definitely all that going on in the book, partially. Like, yeah, it was like a, a tip of the hat kind of thing to it. Yeah. So there was um, the one story where he he wasn't even like paid. He was just on his way from one village to the other. Right. And he comes across those, like, dead bodies, and he finds that house in the woods. Mm -hmm. And it's that beast that's living there. And there was, like, the bluish-purple rose bush. Right. That was the Beauty and the Beast theme. Yeah, with Novellan. Is that how you pronounce Uh, it? I read it. Megan listened to the audio. So I'm going to defer to you. I'm trying to think of how he said it. Novellan? Is it, like, I think it's, like, Nevea. I think if, if you pulled it up, I could probably... It's N I V E L L E N. And the Bruxa, which is a vampire. I, sorry, I fail you. Anyway, that one was very Beauty and the Beast esque yes. because, you know, the pretty women would come and. The virgins. Stay, yeah, and they would stay with him for and they, like a couple for like months a year. To a year. Yeah. And then they would go home and. With that a would, bunch of dowry, like yeah, golds and whatever. Like he would pay them and they would. Which be, I thought was interesting because then they were like, do you want to be changed? Or. You know, he was like, do you want it to be changed back? And the other guy's like, no, why would I? Like, I, 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 I've never been able to speak to women before. And this is like a great. It's a great conversation starter. He's like, men bring their daughters to me that are merchants. And then I just chit chat with them. And then all of a sudden they understand who I am. And I understand who I am. And then all of a sudden, you know, because I'm mysterious, all of a sudden they want to be with me. He's like, before they wouldn't have wanted to be with me. Like, I get that. Like the uniqueness of it. Like the. The girls want the bad boys. Well, like, and just think, they would win every game of Never Have I Ever. Yeah. Unless there was another one of them in the room. This is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was also um, a reference to Rapunzel when Geralt was talking to Stregobor about the women born in the eclipse. That was a hard chapter for me to listen to because it's like, fuck you. Fuck <laughs> you. Fuck you, wizard. For locking these women up just because they were born under the eclipse. I mean, like, granted, I don't know what the autopsies revealed. They never really discussed that. So we don't know, like, if it's a legit claim or if it's just one of those, like, astro 
you know, astrology <laughs> things where like you read into <laughs> the it. The astro astrology things. Listen, those cream drinks are good. Cream it. Anyways. <laughs> anyway. Um, but you also in that um, – that was the chapter where they introduced the idea of choosing the lesser evil and yes. he tries to avoid choosing it but ends up choosing it anyway. It's a complicated. I think we were talking about that later. I think we're doing the fairy tale thing. And then, yeah. Okay. So stay tuned for the lesser yeah. evil part. There was also a nod to Snow White with Renfi, again, talking about, you know, the same thing with Stregborn, the woman born on the eclipse. And um, oh, she's talking about how somebody tried to kill her and she was sent into the woods with the huntsman who tried to kill her and take her heart and liver back as proof. And that was very Snow White-esque. And then she also talks about how they tried to poison her with an mm-hmm. apple um, laced with, I think it was nightshade. I think so. So it was very Snow White. If we're wrong, sorry. Yeah. Um, there was also a reference to Rumpelstiltskin, but I think it was like Rumpelstilt something right just in passing probably because more grims has the uh copyright copyright there's the word old i feel like it would be a common like domain now maybe not i don't i don't don't know exactly on that one i mean it could be it might have lapsed and no one ever really uh did anything with that but uh so it was interesting where they make uh agreements on something that they didn't know what they were agreeing on to at that time the law of surprise Yes. So, like, the king's, like, dying. He's like, you know, please help me. And I promise, you know, this surprise thing. And so he's like, basically, the surprise is anything you – the first thing you find in your home that you find that you weren't expecting is what I get to keep. And so in this instance, the king went home and found that his wife had just had a baby, which he wasn't expecting. And so, therefore, this beast, gentleman – night whatever waited until she was of age for being wed and then came to her betrothal but they obviously had relations before that oh yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) obviously because she was like uh i'll totally go with him again the whole idea like girls want them bad boys that don't and he looked like well i mean in the show he looked like a hedgehog but the way yeah, he did look weird. Yeah. But the way they described him, he did have like the weird monstrosities. And then the best part of all of that was that Geralt the Witcher, he helps the queen out and he's like, oh, I'll just invoke the law of surprise because your daughter's pregnant. And then the daughter's like, yeah, I am. Did I miss that part? You must have missed that part. <laughs> damn audiobooks. Yeah. She got a bun she in the pre- oven. She got an – her ego is prego. Oh. And so Geralt – Yo, that's why condoms are important. Yeah. Tune in to our Patreon exclusive about why <laughs> sex education is so important. Oh, good God. This uh, is like borderline yeah. of the- So he, he claims like the law of surprise or whatever you want to call it. Oh, yeah. Then they also talked about um, genies with the gin. Oh, which, by the way, until I watched Supernatural, I didn't realize gin and genies were the same, one and the same-ish. Um, the D is silent. Yeah, I didn't know what gin was until I saw Supernatural. So, thanks. Thanks, um, Jared Paradelecki and Jensen Ackles. I would totally love to thank them in person. Anywho. Um, relations. <laughs> Not even relations, just a hug. I would like to just to hug them. Anyways, um, the gin story has always been an interesting, since I've seen that episode, it was always an interesting concept of like, you can wish whatever you want, but it might not be exactly what you want. And always genies, like with the exception of Aladdin from Disney, because they got that whole story wrong. They're usually begrudgingly helping you because they don't have a choice. Oh yeah. And then they, they make you, they twist your words so you have to precisely say exactly what you want in the right way or they can like fuck you over and just end up because they're pissed that they have to grant your wish they'd make great lawyers oh they would like oh you want a million dollars well i'm gonna kill your whole family and then you're in you get the life insurance you get the life insurance sorry you didn't say how you were gonna get the million dollars yes exactly and it's just like fuck you you want to ask me to do this for you i'm gonna make it the most painful way possible I also liked how uh, you don't really realize right away that Geralt is the one that the genie is bound or the djinn is bound to. And 
it's, I call him Dandelion. You call him Dandelion. Dandelion, um, the bard. His his wishes are so superficial. Oh, so I'm like, really? This, <laughs> these are the things you're wishing for? Like wish number one, I wish that my rival dies. Yeah. Wish number me two, too. I want this chick to like me. <laughs> and then and then he's put into a spell where he's like imagining like. Her. So you kind of think that he did get his wish, but in like a weird. But Yennefer way. put him in that, yeah, to save him, right? So it wasn't really. I mean, that's why I'm like, if you wanted to do like the Jin's way of like, well, this yeah. is how you got into your wish, is right? Her- I'm gonna put you in a coma. That'd be fucked up. Well, Jin, mm-hmm. and Jin will knock you on your ass. So hey, hey. Do you think it's related? Maybe. I'm sure the idea of the Jin. Genie people came out way before the gin alcohol was right. invented. But I'm wondering if the gin alcohol people were like, hey, we should totally name our drink gin because you know who's laid off your ass and think you got your wishes. And then just leave out the D. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Anyway. And that's where you meet Yennefer. Right. I will say a lot of Geralt's adventures in the book track really well. Okay. With the Netflix. So like Dandelion's um Dandelion. Dandelion's wishes, from what I recall when I watched the show, are like pretty verbatim. Oh, they actually the did all that like, in the and, episode. And their personalities, Is it the right? Season finale? I don't know. But like Damn, you know how the, like, the in the book it's like, oh, the witcher like smiled nastily or like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like laughed evilly yeah. or whatever. And then like dandelion, dandelion, whatever is like this, this like pompous, like moron buffoon. Type. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's the same in the show. Right. I actually remember that with the goat scene. Yeah. Which for the past week I've been moving, so therefore I've been listening to books on audio because it's easier to do that than sit down and actually reading um the last wish the witcher series was great on audio and at one point i think i was actually driving and i heard the um the chapter of the edge of the world and the goat came on and okay okay so So (laughs) look at this it looks like beans but it's completely white let's try to do it in our best goat voice (laughs) what what, what was this i think it was look at this it looks like beans, okay. but it's completely white. Is that what he says? <laughs> okay. So I have to say- You can this, go first. <laughs> I have to say this audio was epic. Like when I was listening to this while driving, I like was like, oh my God, what's wrong with my- like when It sounds like it's skipping. It did. And I was like, oh my God, is this like a messed up copy? Like I downloaded this. Why is this wrong? I wonder if they did that in post-op or if he can just- I don't, I don't know, but that's, that's interesting. Okay, well, so one look of, at this bean- what, Look or at, look at this. Look at it this. It looks like a bean, but it's completely white. Okay, look at this, but it's it, a bean, but it's completely white. Okay. <laughs> this is going to be horrible. <laughs> it's just, just let look it go. Look at this. It's a bean, but it's completely white. <laughs> For those of you at home, <laughs> Megan was ferociously rubbing her neck while she was I was trying to make the like uh, I don't know. Okay, not that, I'm, not that I'm gonna do any better, but that was like a really great visual. So look at this, look at this. It's like a bean, but it's completely white. <laughs> oh for fuck's sake. Okay. Bah. Got it. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Now I'm in my head about it. Okay. <laughs> Look at this bean. Or no, wait. Look at this. It looks like a bean, but it's completely white. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> oh, it's better than mine. It's great. When I heard this, I was compl- – and then when I realized it wasn't a mess up on my audio, like, version, I was like – every time he spoke, I was like, get it. Get it, little – Get it. Get it, little goat man. Um, looping back to the gin episode. Oh my god. And that's when we meet. Like you called the episode, not chapter. Chapter. I mean it is an episode because each chapter was broken down into like acts almost. Right. Yeah. Um, you meet Yennefer, and then there's the binding of her thing. Yeah, and there's the binding of her fate with Geralt's fate, and that's how he saves her by using his last wish right. to 
to basically save her from right. the gin. Which she didn't expect no. at all. It was so romantic. <laughs> Okay, so like it wasn't meant to be a romantic gesture. Is he gesture. like under her spell kind of thing? Like he's he in love with her image? Like the he elf was or... under her spell, and that's right. why he went on that rampage right, right, through right. the town. But I meant like because the way she mm. looks, is it like he's in love with the way she looks, but she like disguises herself? I f- or I think he Or is it like her okay, something this of- is pure speculation on my point, but I think he is um, I don't want to say infatuated, but like he likes her because she's different like him. Okay. So it's like she changed her hunchback or whatever to be beautiful, but she's still powerful. And he is like a witcher, so he can't hide who he is because he has like the white hair and whatever. Right. But like he's also trying to fit in and she's doing what she can to fit in. And I so I, I think um, he like – has some sort of weird kinship with her. And because he always tries to just help and not pick the lesser evil. Right. And he chooses to weirdly bind his like fate and soul with hers. After that happens, I feel like it's just unavoidable at that point. Right. But again, I've only Which, read the first the way, that book. Was pretty, so. That was a pretty intense scene about talking about how she was like invisible and like the bath water draping over her so he can kind of tell her body. But you can see the titties. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> but you can still kind of make out her shape and this and that. And I'm like, oh, well, I get it. I mean, it, which is surprising that she even made herself invisible. Although if she knows what gets a man is the – not exactly seeing, but close enough. Titalizing. Yes. Titalizing. 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 We joke or jokingly around to call it. Um, so, you know, she was naked, but you couldn't really see it, but you could kind of mm-hmm. see it, which lets your imagination, which makes it more interesting than just Titties. Mardi Gras. Here's my boobies. Yeah. So. Very true. Very true. Well, on that note, she was a very strong female character. <laughs> So I really like Queen Queen Calanthe as a character. Thanks, Ray, for the correct pronunciation on that. Yeah, Queen Calanthe. Yeah, and Renfrey, which I already already talked about. And then Renfrey is, I think, the first instance where the Witcher has to choose lesser evil. Yes, which is an interesting concept, the lesser evil. So you, it's you take two really shitty. Options. Options. And you pick the better one. Pick the better one. Like, do you want Hitler or Stalin to rule the world? It's like Like, the philosophical... Do you watch The Good Place? Yes. The philosophical problem of the trolley. Yes. Where you're on a trolley, the brakes are broken, you can go one way and you kill, like, one person, but he's, like, an upstanding citizen or something like that. Or you go the other way and you kill more people, but they're, like, ship bags or something along those lines. That's, like, which way do you choose? Ship bags. Hmm. Or it's, like, kill a few to save millions. Right. There was was a one that I heard that it's, like, you can save a sibling, assuming you like your sibling, or you can save five strangers. Mm -hmm. Which would you choose? Right. And, um, you know, it's kind of like, well. Right. Do you protect Renfrey or you just go along with Stregobor and kill, like, her and her entire army because she apparently is evil because she was born on a certain day? Right. But you didn't, you don't know, ever, and see, I feel like that's the hardest part because you don't know the whole story. Like, you're only getting each of their little bits, and which is why I like the whole fairy tales with the backstories because there's always two sides to every story. But I feel like on both sides, they're always obviously telling more of their side and like switching things around to make you feel for them more. Mm -hmm. Where in this case, I'm sure there obviously is one person more evil, but each person gives a great case for why they're not the most evil. And And they they always tell them like, you have to pick. (laughs) Yeah, you have to pick. You can't just stand by and do nothing because then this will happen and this will happen and and actually, when she did say, it, "We'll just, I'll just leave, Gerald. I'll just leave," I'm like, "That bitch ain't going nowhere." Like, yeah. I didn't even remember that in the episode. I just was like, "That bitch ain't going nowhere." 
And sure enough, he was like, oh my God, this is this and this happened. I'm like, duh, yo, she pissed. No woman ain't going to leave her fucking revenge. I like when you get like hood rat, like, duh, yo. Because <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, <laughs> no, that's like. Nah, man, nah. <laughs> It was pretty clutch, though, how she snuck into his fucking bedroom, and he's just like, oh, there's someone in my bedroom. And he, like, almost got, and she's like, do this, Gab. Do this. And he's like, it's midnight. She's like, just a drink, Gab. Just, just a drink. One. Just, just one. one. Although the way she died was kind of weird, where she was just like, I'm cold. It's, it's, I feel like she knew her destiny, and yeah, she just felt maybe. like she had to f- fulfill it. Like, yeah. I felt like she knew because she could yeah. see the future because she even said to him, like, this is how it's going to end and this and this. And he's like, I heard my future. I don't want to know anymore. Like, you know, and she's like. Which I agree with. That's why I won't go see a, like, a psychic. Really? You won't go? We got to go for the- Okay. No, no, that's for another. That's You get to write psychic on the next one. Um, Next episode, we're going to talk about psychics. Psychics. Can we write that down? Because that's part of the something for the next episode. Anyways. um, No, I think it's interesting. Like, she's just like. You're going to do this. And so I think she could, she was a little clairvoyant. Um, and so I think she kind of knew like her destiny lied with his and she knew that's how things were going to end. And so I don't think she tried to fight it. I think she was just like, this is what the fucking shit is. Like, and I think she was tired of running. I think she was tired of fighting. I think she was tired yeah. of dealing with everything. I think she was just, just like face done. it and whatever the outcome is, it is. Yeah, she's like, you know yeah. what? This is what it is. I'm tired of, you know, telling I mean, people. I would be, imagine, like running your whole life. Especially and- if you used to be royalty and then all of a sudden you're not and your stepmom's trying to kill you and this guy, this wizard's fucking trying to kill and you. And you stabbed a huntsman with what? What did they find in his It brain? was like a brooch kind yeah, of fucking thing. Yeah, that's right. A brooch. Click, click, click. Sorry run, about pepper, the clicking. Run. My dog likes to click on the fucking hard floors. Okay, so I did watch the show. You watched maybe like 5% of the show? 3%? 3%. Might be more accurate. Solid. Okay. We usually talk about who we would cast. It's already been done. Thanks, Netflix. (laughs) We'll be in touch. (laughs) Henry Cavill was a great... Witcher, I feel, in my opinion, from from what I read and from what I have seen, he's a great like. I was skeptical at first, but pleasantly surprised. Like after, like I was like, really, they went with Henry, and then yeah, because I wasn't. Imp- I mean, but then after the first episode, I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like when the, when Ray was telling me this is a new show with Henry Cavill, I'm like, and mm-hmm. like, how am I supposed to be impressed by this? Like, yeah, I like the bathtub scene just because he was hot and. <laughs> In 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 Superman. <laughs> Hashtag DC get your shit together with your live action movies. Um Hashtag stop CGIing out mustaches. <laughs> so so I wasn't too impressed that they had him. I was like, okay, whatever. But then I was the bits that I did see, I was like, okay, okay. And then when I read the book, I was like, Oh, right. Yeah. Now I see how he fits so well. And you could hear like some of the dialogue oh, he would yeah. say because it was verbatim. Oh yeah. Yeah. So it'd be like, wait. And my husband is a pretty impressive. I was just gonna say, let's do our Witcher impressions. I'll go. I'll go first oh, since you did say the okay. The goat. <laughs> wait. So it's just like a grunt and, and then, then fuck grunt fuck. <laughs> Which I don't remember him saying fuck at all in this book. Oh, my, by the way, no. But I think for TV, it just okay. Is, I was like, I remember like eight cuss words in this whole fucking book. But if you think about it, like it does fit the personality by the way oh, he's yeah, described. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he'd just be like. I think they were just trying to clean it up. So it's like, it's like a deep, like a deep voice. Yeah, you gotta like. <clears throat> yeah, you gotta, you gotta be like half sick. Like use the like the diaphragm. Like, <clears throat> fuck. <laughs> and, and you have to have like, I'm not kidding. You have to like have a sore throat, like a tarot read kind of. Like I've been smoking Like you for suck too years. much dick? Yeah. Mm. You said tirades. <laughs> <laughs> I got where you were going with that. All right. So like, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to like, okay. All right. Like, ugh, fuck. <laughs> God, I hope that picked up. Did that even pick up? I think on it did. I think it did. Okay. <clears throat> <Whoa>. <laughs> 
how it's even worse. You sound like Billy from the Hocus Pocus when he cuts open his mouth. He's like, I'm so thirsty. Oh, shit. I thought they did a good job with the casting oh, overall. I mean, I guess we're doing season two, so. Which, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Doesn't go into you. Hashtag don't get us sued. Hashtag copyright infringement. But it's a great song. It is a great song. And it's a very catchy song, like the song from the Lego movie. Everything is awesome. Mm-hmm. I only have that song stuck in my head. Thanks a lot. Everything is cool. <laughs> now you got that song stuck in my head. Thank you. That was your fault. Toss a coin to you. <laughs> uh, if you have not heard the song, you've got to look That'd it up. That would be it's a great. good mashup. If somebody could do the Everything is Awesome Mash up with a trust of Crane or Witcher. Send it our way and we'll totally send you a shirt. Yeah. We have sexy shirts. They're also available for purchase. Yes. On our Zazzle store. Or if you sign up for our patron, Patreon and become a patron. There yes. we go. Because it's not the same thing. No. But it is Patreon Dot website. Com. Yes. And to become a patron. Yeah. You'll get some free goodies. Um, if you do the $10 and up donation, you get a t-shirt and access to our uncut episodes which includes our uncut interviews with authors like Dennis E. Taylor of the Bob Ver series, Ailey Martinez, who wrote Helen and Troy's Epic Road Quest, uh, Janet Beard, who wrote Atomic Make City sequels. Girls, Matt Solomon and Chris Pauls, who wrote Deck Z. Okay, I have to say congrats to you for remembering all of their names. Like, she did not have any notes for that. She just, like, remembered. I'm like, yeah, the one author who wrote the one book, and... And then also our uncut rambles and extra goodies like our audio sound tests, our Christmas <laughs> gift exchange, um, you drink recipes, drink recipe cards, blooper, full length drink blooper reels, which are coming. Coming because there's so much of it. I want to, <laughs> there's so much. I want to make sure that it's, it's worthy mm-hmm. for our patrons. We're also going to do a shaker tribute video. Yes. Because um, if you've seen our, our drink episodes, you know we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's on my to-do list, along with a billion other things. And we're doing a website, which will be coming soon. God dang, I have a lot of to-do. As well. <laughs> <sighs> Can't be summer yet. <laughs> um. So, yeah, anything else about The Witcher? Um, oh, Valley of Plenty. So, speaking of um, St. Patty's. Well, I was going to say abnormalities. Okay. Because The Witcher, <laughs> because the Witcher is a minority. He's not, you know, yes. he's, he's, he's a very minority. Uh-huh. And so, in the real world, you know, we like to... Um, love everyone equally and just acknowledge the minorities in the world. And one of those minorities, which also aligns with St. Patrick's day, um, are redheads, which the reason why I connected the two is because a percentage of Irish people are redheads. And Mm -hmm. my great grandfather was redhead and my grandfather was redhead. My boyfriend has a red beard. Does that count? Yeah. I bet he's got some Irish in him. Or something around that. Well, apparently, when we were in Iceland, he got mistaken for, like, an Icelandic person. Because that coloring is, like, very common over there with, like, the blonde, light brown hair and then a bright red beard. And that is – And I looked into it, and apparently it's, like, a genetic thing for men where they have a red beard and different color hair. And it's just, like, a genetic thing based on where your ancestors are from. Huh. Very yeah, interesting. So um, we love all of our red-headed and red-bearded yes. folk. And one of my best friends who's a red-head, and I call her Ginger, and, and I mean it in the loving way. I not call like my a, boyfriend Ginger. And I, yeah. In the most loving way. And she has the, the very pretty strawberry blonde hair, mm-hmm. the pale skin, and she's due soon with a baby. And mm-hmm. so we all jokingly go, we hope it's – we actually are all hoping – it's a redhead job. Well, they have the redheaded, the redhead appreciation day. Yeah, yeah, they do. And I think it's actually, I don't know I think actually passed, what it is. But. I think we passed that. But um, I know every time it pops up, I text my friends and I'm like, hey, happy national 
redheaded day. And so with St. Patrick's Day, we thought for Conscious Corner, we would just talk about redheads. All the red haired folk. Yes. Wherever that red hair is. Yes. Wherever. If Wherever. Wherever. Just. You got anywhere red hair? anywhere. Yep. We love you no matter where it is. Big hearts to you. hmm So. <laughs> Mike's going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're a redhead and you listen, send us a picture. Oh, that would be super But not cute. like a dick pic, like a cute pic. <laughs> I just had to throw that out there because we did say, like, no matter where your red hair is. <laughs> I was just thinking, oh, it's going to be so yeah. cute. I'm matching all the cute red yeah. faces and the freckles and this and that. And then you're like, oh. I'm the voice of reason, obviously. And then I'm like, oh, yeah. And I'm then the I just cynic. saw a whole bunch of penises in my head. So, yeah, yep. thanks for that. Anyway, moving on. Our next episode <laughs> is going to air on April 2nd, 2020. And we're kind of doing a random, we're taking a hard left turn here just because uh, we both live in Florida and Megan is from Florida. So we are going to be reading Mm -hmm. Best State Ever by Dave Barry. And it is, um, I think the subtitle is like, A Florida Florida Man Man Protect or or Defends defends His his Homeland. Yeah, and um, he it's a hilarious book about him exploring some of the things that make Florida. Florida. Yeah, quintessential Florida. Um, and it's it a little is, different from sci-fi. It's a little different from sci-fi, but they do talk about skunk ape and mermaids and sponges. And, and gators. And gators. And, and sharks. And sharks and old people and oh, shooting and ranges and Key West and drag queens. And naked people. Yeah, so I mean, it's hilarious. And it's great. I, I mean, even if you are a huge sci-fi buff, and that's why you were listening to this, or you were listening to the Baba Verse, or I know it might be out of your comfort zone, but I really do recommend it. Whether you live in Florida, don't live in Florida. Um, I feel I like people, to I, visit Florida. I feel like our our fans in Australia might appreciate this even. Yeah, because um, everybody says Florida is, is America's the, Australia. Australia. Yep. And you know, I didn't believe that until recently when I was talking about all the animals who wanted to eat us and kill us in Florida. Hashtag Florida man. Um, but yeah, so I recommend you reading this um, or listening the audio. Again, the auto, audio book on that was pretty great. Um, yeah. So that'll be our next episode. Best yes. State Ever by Dave Barry. And it goes up on April 2nd, 2020. And until then, as we like to say, stay, stay lively with, with your, your libations. libations.